Good morning, good evening, and wherever the sun may find you. My name is Walt, and this is Coffee and Concepts on, oops, wrong side, Keystroke, nope. Oh, I can't believe I did that. Keystroke medium. <laughs> uh, we're talking about rare finds today on Keystroke medium and uh, rare in the, ver in the version and form of coffee. Um, so I wanted to do a couple of uh, a couple of shows about uh, some rare coffees out there. Now uh, a lot of us know the who are like big time die hard coffee fans. Uh, we know about uh, some of the more um, easily easily find, but not so much on the beaten path type coffees like Ethiopian, Sumatra. Um, uh, Peruvian, uh, so you know things you don't normally associate with uh, coffee, uh, but then there are some like rare, super rare types of coffee. The one most everybody knows about is Kona coffee from Kona, Hawaii, and the reason that the coffee is so rare is because um, it's only grown in the volcanic soil of certain mountains, which uh, that soil is just absolutely perfect for brewing um, the light roasted beans that they use. Um, and then uh, uh, it's got a, a really nice crisp taste to it. Um, real heavy bite on the caffeine, just a really, really, really nice bean of coffee. And uh, it's usually um, it's usually pretty expensive uh, just because it's coming from that area of the world. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, import export of that to mainlands, you know, whether it be America, Canada, uh, Mexico or over to Europe um, can get a little expensive because, you know, you travel, you get a bounce across an ocean and do some craziness. So um, we have uh, the Kona coffee is just uh, the, the most well-known that everybody kind of, kind of usually latches on to. And then, so for today, I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, about Jamaican Blue Mountain coffee. Now, this is a this is a coffee you don't often hear about. It is from the um, Blue Mountain area of Jamaica, hence where it gets the name. Um, it's uh, it's only harvested at certain times of the year, just because of the fact that it's um, it's on this very small area of the island. There's only uh, a there's they only kind of. Uh, harvest it in waves. So um, it's a little more expensive just because of the area, um, how it's harvested and then brought to market. And then, um, uh, you know, how it's then distributed to the world. Um, it's really known for the fact that even though the beans are typically light roasted um, uh, and have a good caffeine uh, hit to it, um, it doesn't suffer from a lot of the like acidic uh, acidity that you're normally going to see in a coffee like this, uh, grown at a high altitude, um, certain types of soil. So, um, yeah, you get this really nice blend of coffee with very low, low acid. So you get a really smooth, hey, William Joseph Roberts, good morning. Um, you get this really nice, smooth coffee with um, not a lot of acid, so it goes down really easy. It's a very nice drinking coffee, um, and like I said, you're going to get um, you're going to get uh, um, a really nice, nice hint of everything to this. It's just a really nice blend of coffee. Oh, I um, seem to have lost my screen. <laughs> uh, it's all black. It's weird. Uh, so yeah, um, really, really enjoy uh, this level of coffee uh, from from an area. Uh, price point wise, uh, the Jamaican coffee is going to run you for a twelve to fourteen ounce bag. So like your regular normal uh, sized coffee bag that you might buy at a store, uh, you're gonna see, you're gonna pay a little bit more because once again, it's a premium coffee grown in a very select and hard to get to uh, area of the world uh, it has to be exported uh, they always um, if, if it has a blue mountain seal on the uh, on the bag it means it's fair trade coffee so it's it's uh, ethically sourced and and locally grown and, and so forth and so on which is really what you want um, so um, you price point wise 12 to 14 ounce bag you're looking at about 35 to $40 a bag. 
Um, you go a little bigger, five pound bags can go for as much as $75. Um, I've seen them go as high as $140. So it, it, it's really going to depend on what you're, uh, what you're looking for as far as, um, uh, like a, an amount. Um, it, when, when I go for a blue mountain blend, I usually get the small, like 12 to 14 ounce bag, uh, just because I'm only going to trot it out at certain times when I really want something special. And, you know, I'm not just going to use it as a, um, uh, a drinking, like my standard drinking go-to, um, my go-tos for coffee are usually uh, a dark roast. Um, I really like uh, the Sumatra coffees and uh, the French roasts. Uh, sometimes if I'm into something really, really smoky. Um, so yeah, so there's some fun stuff. So um, rare coffees, uh, we wanted to start today with the Jamaican blue roast. And now we're gonna get into something I really, really enjoy, which is rare places to pick up books. Um, We've all been to play, you know, we've all been out and about where, whether it be a bus station or uh, an airport or um, train station, they always got the, those little shops, those little gift shops where you can buy books and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's just a thing. Hey, I got a couple hours to kill on an airplane. This looks pretty good. Um, a lot of these gift shops have gotten smart and they're doing stuff like, hey, you know, this is a popular author. He's selling X number of copies per books. If we have this right next to the register, it's an impulse buy. Uh, and, uh, you know, people will grab it and, and hopefully like it. And the next time they come through this airport, they'll buy whatever else we put out in front of there. So um, the next... Uh, the next kind of thing I prefer is I love going to little shops that have like a good blend of stuff. Um, so little bookstores, um, used bookstores, um, you can go to consignment shops. I mean, there's, there's no end to places that you can find just really, really good books. One of my, uh, uh my favorite pieces of my collection, I got at a, uh, a small consignment shop and it was, a copy of old man in the sea uh and it was dog-eared and it was old but it had this like really 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 old like faux leather cover and i don't know i just something about it it just looked like something that had been in somebody's pocket for years and i just absolutely love that copy so um uh so yeah rare bookstores fun bookstores like that are just absolutely a blast to check out um we have this place in uh, Providence, Rhode Island. Um, and the place is called uh, Riff Raff Bookstore. And uh, it's a nice little bookstore because of the fact that um, uh, it's tucked in. We have a lot of these old mill buildings down in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, and in these mill buildings, they, they, you know, like uh, the artistic community that we have here in Providence has kind of taken over to renovate a lot of these places. So instead of, you know, um, instead of putting in more uh, mill style fabrication studios, uh, these places are putting in bookstores, they're putting in restaurants, they're putting like all this crazy stuff in there. And they've been doing it for decades now. Um, so... Yeah, Riff Raff Bookstore is actually right down the street from this really cool restaurant we went to one time, and we we heard about it, so we kind of we kind of slithered in there to check it out. Um, surprisingly, they had this amazing coffee bar in there that was just absolutely fantastic. Um, the uh, um, the atmosphere was a lot of fun. They had this really out neat outdoor patio uh, that you go and sit down and sip coffee or you know um, you know your beverage of choice, of which they had quite a bit. Um, there was uh, a lot of books, especially like a big local section for local authors. Um, uh, they had a big uh, uh, H.P. Lovecraft uh, section because he's from here. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there was a, there's a lot in there was a lot involved um, as far as uh, like things to see, things to look at. Lots of local authors, uh, but they had this this huge huge uh sitting area where you could check out um uh you check out your favorite books while getting uh a drink or some really great coffee um as you can see right here we got their price list this is from a little bit ago so this might not absolutely be current but you can get all your favorite coffees here 
as well as a large assortment of teas. Um, but of course, you know, they do have a fully stocked bar. So you can sit down, enjoy your coffee, kind of hang out, uh, check out some books uh, right before you buy them. Um, and everything was priced really, really well. So you you, you weren't going to go in there breaking the bank. You would definitely go in there. And if you were, you were a connoisseur of books that just really like to get your hands on some old pages uh, and, you know, of course, some new stuff, uh, you could sit down, crack the spine uh, and uh, get some of your favorite coffee or what have you, um, and just kind of hang out. It was a really nice atmosphere. Uh, people were very friendly. Uh, they were quick to recommend things if you wanted to try new coffees um, or uh, different types of tea. Uh, we sat there for about half an hour, 45 minutes, uh, perused the stacks, checked out the different different things they had to offer. And it was just a really nice experience. So if you're ever down in Providence, uh, check out Riff Raff Bookstore because it was a really fun, uh, fun time. Of course, we went before, you know, all the craziness. But um, as you can see by some of the pictures in the um, in the background uh, with, uh, you know, you had uh, people enjoying themselves and and checking out their checking out their coffees with their masks on as you can see right here this lady is is off to the side and you know she's checking out a book and and enjoying some uh, nice refresh refreshment out in the uh, out in the open air so if you get a chance Riff Raff bookstore uh, and if you have a favorite bookstore out there that is off the beaten path not like one of the big box stores but uh, is a really great representation of an off the beaten path where you've picked up a book or two uh, hit us up in the comments let us know and uh, maybe we can uh, reach out to those folks and uh, feature them on on a uh, on one of our shows so I wanted to thank everybody for sharing their morning with us this morning uh, I want to uh, point out that uh, Josh Scott and Chuck do their keystroke medium uh, live ah, I got it that time uh, on Monday mornings at 11 a.m. Eastern uh, where they do roundtable discussions and uh, interesting interviews uh, um, where the chat is the place to be uh, coffee and concepts normally on Tuesdays unless um, my workplace is driving me absolutely bananas. So, um, and I have to be careful of that word. My dog really likes bananas. Um, so, um, yeah, <laughs> Tuesdays, normally 7.30 a.m. Eastern. Uh, on Friday, we have Lauren and Kayleen doing their level best to dive deep into all the ins and outs of publishing and reading for the uh, new and uh, educated reader and writer, uh, where they interview people who've been in the industry, around the industry, uh, and enjoying the book scene for many, many a moon, and they soak them uh, for their advice. Um, we have Josh Gayu doing long-form storytelling on YouTube. Speaking of which, get there, like, subscribe, uh, help us blow those numbers up so we can do, do even more about bringing you more great content. Um, such as James S. Aaron's marathon author, uh, as well as uh, Kayleen doing story time, where she takes chapter number one and reads a section of that and gives you a, uh, a good feeling for what those books do. Uh, we really appreciate you coming out this morning. Thanks for hanging out and uh, for sharing your coffee with us this morning. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, where uh, we get into reading, writing, and a little bit more right here on Keystroke Medium.